Well, welcome back to another day of our Advent uh, devotionals in Narnia. Today is day 14, and it's titled Adam and Eve. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, and then 23 through 24. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. It says, And the Lord God made garments of skins for the man and for his wife and clothed him. Therefore the Lord sent them uh, him from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cher- uh, cherubim with a flaming sword and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. This is the word of God for us today. The story of Adam and Eve is a Christmas story. Uh, we actually talked about this last year, last Advent. Uh, when we did our series on Christmas from the backside. Uh, The medieval church observed their feast day, uh, feast day for Adam and Eve on December the 24th. And it was a necessary biblical backstory to the birth of Christ on December the 25th. That's why they celebrated it. Churches often held town-wide mystery plays of creation, uh, Adam and Eve and the nativity, among others, to commemorate the day and teach the story of salvation. Sounds pretty fun. But the birth of humanity uh, was bookend in the liturgical year of the birth of Christ, and they did this to contrast and show the parallels between the two events. The story of Adam and Eve is an ancient story, but Like so many passages in the Bible, it comes to a lie for us even today uh, because we still relate to it because we are, it's a story about humans and we're human. Adam and Eve probably sound strangely familiar to us. Maybe not strangely, but they definitely sound familiar. They, just like we do, point their fingers at each other and the snake. They won't take responsibility for what they've done. They hide from God and hide behind their mistakes. Although God is disappointed, angry, um, that he, although God is disappointed and angry that they can they did not follow His commands, um, God still loves them. That's the beauty. That's the, the the wonder of God's love. And God, even though God sends them away from from paradise to live beyond paradise and they he closed the door behind them as they left paradise god does not forsake them god doesn't leave them god doesn't abandon them god gives them as we talked yesterday a sign an act of grace he gives them clothes to wear on the way in narnia uh, the human children are called sons of adam and daughters of eve That's what the Narnians refer to the human children, uh, Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy, when they enter to Narnia and they meet the different people that live there. And as it just happens, the Pevensey children find fur coats in the wardrobe too as they pass into this new world. Perhaps Adam and Eve face a greater danger than the White Witch. They had to scratch their living from the dirt of the ground. Their new clothes are a sign of the end of paradise where the Bible tells us they were vegetarians. They went without clothes. Everything that they need was provided for them. But Lewis, C.S. Lewis, paints this beautiful picture of Adam and Eve, of humanity, leaving paradise, leaving the safety, and entering into a world that is cursed. The children going through the wardrobe and entering into Narnia, where it is always winter, is a symbol of humanity, of Adam and Eve falling and plunging humanity and creation into sin. It's beautifully done. The thing is, is that there is still hope, right? Even though Adam and Eve have been kicked out of the garden, even though the Pevensies enter, leave their safety from their home and enter into this new magical world, you know, the, the fur coats that the, the children have, they are too big for them in the story. 
they realize this, that these fur coats are, are for adults and they're children. But that's the thing. The beautiful thing is, is those first fur coats are symbolic of, of the future. It's a sign of the blessing and promise that God will protect us. Those fur coats may have been too big for them then, but they predict that they will become new people one day. Those children will grow and grow into those fur coats and they will become kings and queens in Narnia. We live, we have lived on this far side of paradise for quite a while, for generations, for thousands of years now, and still we don't do a very good job at following God's commands. We, just like Adam and Eve, we tend to blame each other. We point our fingers and hide from God. Even though we would still do this, God will not abandon us. God has not abandoned humanity because we are reminded in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, that unto us a child is born, unto us a son, a son is given. God can't turn our lives magically back into paradise. But God does offer redemption through his own son by sending his own son to us. And through that, God offers us a new life, and a new identity in Christ. And sometimes he even offers us a, a coat every now and then, especially when we need it. Just a few questions for us today to reflect on. As the medieval Christians saw Adam and Eve and Jesus and Mary, they were sort of matched pairs. Adam and Eve brought death to humanity. Mary and Jesus brought life. What are some other ways you might compare and contrast these two groups, Adam and Eve and Mary and Jesus? What are some other similarities or opposites, parallels and contrasts that you might see? Also, the story of the fall is probably one of the most well-known biblical stories. The question is, is why do you think that is? It might be an easy question for us to answer, but sometimes when we ponder those easy questions, we learn something new. How does the fall, story of the fall speak to your life today? Where are you at with that? And how might you be wrestling with that story even today? Are you wrestling with pointing your finger at someone? Are you wrestling with repentance, coming back to God after you've made a mistake? Are you wrestling with receiving a gift or a blessing from God? We all are probably at a different place in our faith, but we're still all on the same journey. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you've blessed us so mightily that even when we... Uh, even when we do, still don't get it right. Even when we do point our fingers at each other, you call us to repentance. You never abandon us to our evil ways. And you always have for us prepared the blessing of the Christ child. We give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you have a blessed day and I look forward to being with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.